Hi everyone, welcome back to the Web3 channel. My name is Zach. In this video, we're looking at some interesting news when it comes to, I guess, regulators not being a big fan of crypto. World financial watchdog crypto could endanger economies worldwide. The decisions of the group made up of policymakers around the world are not legally binding. So that's a good start. Fantasy Stability Board aims to avoid regulatory arbitrage and fragmentation. The organization's first crypto findings published in 2018 found digital assets pose no material risk to broader markets. However, crypto could represent a threat to the world's finances, according, according to the watchdog that monitors markets and around the globe. The Financial Stability Board made up of an assortment of policymakers that work with the IMF, cited the danger in a report Wednesday signaling, singling out the scale, structural vulnerabilities, and increasing tie of digital assets to traditional finance. The report highlights crypto's recent boom with a 2.6 trillion USD tri uh, mark cap at the end of 2021. Established in 2009, the FSF FSB didn't publish its first crypto research until 2018, concluding that then that the business of blockchain posed no material risk to the economy writ large. Membership into the group is voluntary and its findings are not binding. Though crypto's volatility has yet to spill over to the other markets, the increasing involvement in the space by banks and other asset managers, plus the prevalence of crypto derivatives and other leveraged products, could sell a shift. Assessing and addressing financial stability risks in the crypto asset sector is an important priority of the FSB's work agenda for 2022. Our ambition is to achieve a global policy approach to avoid regulatory arbitrage and fragmentation. Michael Fasanalo, sorry for getting the name wrong, Director of Training and Regulatory Affairs for Blockchain Intelligence Group said it makes sense to harbour concerns around crypto rapid growth and infiltration of traditional finance systems. From a compliance standpoint, the regulatory patchwork is an Achilles heel for both industry and government and this non-standard approach from global governing bodies will inevitably result in jurisdiction shopping among criminals. The FSB report examines three segments of the crypto market and backed crypto access such as Bitcoin, stablecoins and DeFi and create a crypto trading platforms. Synthetic exposure to Bitcoin have flowed since the USCC signed off on an ETF holding Bitcoin futures. Issuers including Fidelity Investments are now angling for US regulators to go ahead on spot Bitcoin ETFs along the same lines as those offered in Canada, Europe and South America. Dozens of mutual funds and separately managed accounts now hold another popular product the Grayscale Bitcoin trade. Stable coins, meanwhile, increased in market cap from about 6 billion USD at the start of 2020 to 157 billion USD at the end of last year. Stable coins pegged the value to reserves such as the US dollar. As the assets have swelled, regulators have been paying more and more attention, with SEC Chair Gary Gensler saying last year that stablecoins act like poker chips at the casino. But Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said in January that CBDCs and stablecoins can coexist. Jean Nelly Liang, the Undersecretary to Domestic Finance at the US Department of the Treasury said during a hearing last week that only licensed banks should be allowed to issue stablecoins, reaffirming a November report on stablecoin regulation published under the Biden administration. What is, I think, kind of important to notice here is that this is not legally binding. However, does that mean that this won't have any effect on regulation, etc.? Of course it will. Realistically, there's going to be a lot of, rightfully so, arguments on both sides of the coin at both against DeFi and for DeFi, right? And it's important that we have these discussions about how can we make this work? Because whilst, of course, personally, even myself running a Web3 channel, I don't run a Web3 channel with the evangelism. Is that? I don't know. The, the, <laughs> the evangelism, I think, basically saying that Web3 is perfect. That is not, we're nowhere near perfectism right now. We're, we're, we're very far away from it. The amount of fraud, the amount of scams, are prevalent in this scene and that's not to say that the scene's bad either it's to say that this new technology right now that is being built that is being used to empower generally the human race but there are definitely issues in my opinion that need to be ironed out and i do think that there does need to be some level 
of regulatory framework. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not claiming to know everything, but I do believe that we do need to know a little bit about at least how can the government and what should the government be doing here? What should different governments be doing? Because when I say the government, I talk about the UK and the US, but there's so many governments out there. Every country is going to have their own rules on it. And I think it is important that we are able to essentially look at this from both sides of the picture essentially and be like, okay, well, there are problems here. There are also solutions here. How can we make the best of all of it? And I think reports like this will definitely go on the anti-Web3 movement. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily the worst thing in the world either. I think we do need to have a balanced point of view and not all be moon people about it. That being said, what are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take. That being said, this is the Web3 channel. I cover everything happening on the Web3 space. Well, it's crypto, NFT, and metaverse news. Subscribe if you want to know everything happening with that. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next Web3 video.